Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mei Yin, Program Leader of the Food Technology Program. Thank you for your interest in this talk. So the outline of my talk today is as follows. First, I'll talk briefly about what exactly is future food. What is the local food ecosystem? What are the available career opportunities? And finally, I'll elaborate on the SIT Messi Food Technology Program. So what exactly is future food? To, to put it simply, future food is food products that you're not consuming regularly right now, but it is expected that it's something that you will consume more in the coming years. So examples of future food are like plant-based meats, insects, algae, and lab-grown meat, for example. So the picture here shows a impossible burger. And what is different from this impossible burger with the regular burgers is that this impossible burger contains a plant-based meat patty that is made from plant-based materials. So in terms of the taste, appearance, as well as the texture of this plant-based meat patty, it resembles closely to that of the regular meat patty. So this particular Impossible Burger was actually launched globally in 2016. In, the, in Singapore, it was launched last year in February. And right now, besides being available in restaurants as a food item that consumers can order, it is also available now in supermarkets as a food ingredient this year. So the purpose of showing this Impossible Burger is to illustrate that the food industry currently is evolving rapidly. So in this rapid development, there exist many opportunities with regards to career opportunities for food technology students. So next, in terms of the local food ecosystem, so on locally, there are several current developments. So the first one is that there is growing emphasis with regards to food supply, food security. And recently, there is a research institute that is set up to look into product innovations and helping food companies entering the market. And before the COVID-19 situation, so Singapore Food Agency announced that Singapore aims to produce 30% of its nutritional needs by 2030, up from the current level of 10%. So at present, Singapore is already a leading regional food and nutrition hub, with several multinational companies setting up their te regional technical centres in Singapore. More recently, a plant-based egg firm, Eat Just, announced that it will launch its first factory in Asia, in Singapore. So similar to the global trend, the local food industry is evolving as well, and hence providing many opportunities for food technology graduates. So the drivers for the development of future foods are as follows. One is consumers is looking at the source of the food supply. Sourcing of the food would need to be ethical as well as sustainable. So although many of these new food products and food ingredients are developed outside of Singapore, or outside of Asia, there is also a need to adapt these food products and food ingredients to suit the Asian palate. Specifically for Singapore, there is also a need to enhance our food supply resilience, food supply chain resilience, and how to increase the security of our food supply. So with these drivers, as well as the developments in terms of the local food industry, there is a need for professionals with knowledge in terms of food product development, food product manufacturing, as well as food safety to join the food industry. So in short, the message is that the food industry in Singapore is growing. There is a demand for food scientists as well as food technologies to join this industry. So in terms of the local food industry in Singapore, so there are several categories of companies. So for example, for food and beverage manufacturers to the consumers, companies such as FNN or Abbott will be familiar to the consumers. So behind this category of food product manufacturers, there also exists another category which are the food ingredient suppliers. So they supply the food ingredients to the product manufacturers for them to produce their products, as well as to assist them in terms of R&D. 
So besides these two categories of manufacturers, there's also food caterers such as select groups, for example, as well as regulatory and research bodies such as Singapore Food Agency and ASTAR. And increasingly, the startup companies are playing a more important role in this food industry by researching and commercializing new food products and ingredients. So in terms of the career opportunities, here are some of the possible career paths that food technology graduates can embark on to join the food industry in Singapore. So it ranges from lab-based positions such as food application technologies or quality assurance personnel to a more process environment driven such as process engineer or process technologies. Or, or if you are more interested in research or more people oriented, positions related to such as research scientists or sales personnel might be suitable for food technology graduates. So food industry itself is diverse. It requires professionals with diverse expertise to contribute to this industry to, that leads to the production of a food product. So if we look at the knowledge areas, it ranges from science topics such as microbiology and food chemistry to a more applied science or a more engineering topic such as um, food engineering and processing or food characterization. For a food product to be successful in the market, understanding a good understanding of the marketing as well as consumer behaviour would be required as well. So besides the technical aspects or in terms of the technical knowledge of food industry professional would need to have, there's also a need to consider the soft skills that is required by the graduate. In terms of individual soft skills such as critical thinking, problem solving, Digital skills such as virtual communication or virtual collaboration that is especially critical in situation, current situation. Or on a global aspect of it is being aware of the global trends, being aware of the cultures, the, the diverse cultures um, globally. How do you communicate uh, accordingly? So therefore, when you're selecting an undergraduate program, besides looking at the curriculum itself, you might wish to consider how the program helps you to attain some of these soft skills that are critical in this 21st century graduate. So next, I'll move on to the SIT Messi Joint Degree Program. So this is a four years degree program with direct honours that is co-conferred by SIT and Messi University. So in terms of SIT, so SIT is a University of Applied Learning. So at SIT, we hope to develop graduates with the following attributes, so which we term it as the SIT DNA. So first, we wish to develop graduates who are thinking thinkers, meaning who are able to apply the knowledge that they have learned and being able to put them into practice. And secondly, graduates who are able to learn, unlearn and relearn. So what it means is that graduates who are able to practice continuous learning in their careers even after they graduate. The third aspect of it is catalyst for transformation. So being able to problem solve for the company that he or she is working in by applying critical thinking skills and problem solving skills. And lastly, adding value to the community that the graduate is working in. So the partner university in this program is Massey University. So Massey University is recognized as one of the top university for its food technology program. So it leads the world in terms of agri-food with research and teaching program. And the Bachelor of Food Technology program with direct honors is one of its flagship program. There are two food technology campuses for Massey University in New Zealand. So students of, in this program has the opportunity to visit one of these campus in New Zealand during the program itself. So a quick overview of the program is that in terms of the modules that are taught in this program, it can be broadly classified into three main categories, food science, food engineering, as well as business. So 
The business aspect of it is not taught as a separate module itself. So rather, the business element is embedded into the modules. For example, students would, would need to develop a business case for the food product they have developed in their capstone project, for example. So as mentioned just now, SIT is a university of applied learning. So in terms of the learning approaches, so for this program, we focus a lot on problem solving, collaboratively in a group, and also the student population for this program is a bit more diverse in the sense that we have fresh diploma holders graduate as well as A-level graduates. There is also a handful of students who are actually currently working in the companies pursuing their program on a part-time basis. So we believe that this diversity in terms of student population is actually beneficial to the student learning because, for example, those who are currently working would be able to provide their classmates with insights on the food industry, for example. And also in terms of the curriculum, it is very industry-centric. What I meant by industry-centric is that the problem statements that are given are based on industry scenarios. For example, in terms of the laboratory assignments or in terms of the capstone project, project briefs are actually carried out with the industry as a partner. So a quick look through in terms of the curriculum structure. As mentioned earlier, this is a four years degree program. So in the first year, that's where students of non-related food science um, background join the program in the first year. So in the first year, fundamental modules are covered to bridge the knowledge in terms of fundamentals. So in the first year, third trimester, it is a break for this year one students to either be working in a company on a short-term basis to gain insights with regards to the local food industry, or they can also have an opportunity to go overseas for industry placement. In the second year, so we have students from the first year joining the second year, as well as diploma holders with articulated diplomas can join this program in direct entry in the second year. So in the second year, core modules are taught for the first two trimesters with a specialization modules taught in the third trimester. In the third year, after one trimester of specialization modules, so students will be working in, will be placed in companies for a 28 weeks placement, which we term as IWSP, which stands for Integrated Work Study Program for a duration of 28 weeks. Upon return from the IWSP, that's where they will embark on their capstone projects in the final year. So in this food technology degree program, there are two capstone projects. The first capstone project is a food technology project that is done individually, which I'll elaborate further in the subsequent slides. And the second capstone project will be a group-based project where students work collaboratively to develop an innovative food product with a company as a partner. So in terms of the curriculum itself, as mentioned earlier, it's broadly classified into food science, food engineering, and food business. So this is the range of topics that we cover. It is very broad-based in terms of training. So we believe that a broad-based training will equip the student with the ability to embark on the diverse roles that are available in, term, in the food industry. So in, as this is a joint degree program, the teaching is actually taught by staff from both universities. A majority of our teaching staff actually have prior food industry experience. So with that, they actually bring along their experience and are able to provide um, real life examples on how the theory can be applied in terms of the food industry. With regards to the practical sessions, they are also co-led by professional officers who are academic staff with prior working experience in the food industry. So this is the staff from SIT who is teaching in the program, as well as the staff from Massey University from, who are also teaching in this program. So what you can see from here is that students are actually exposed to diverse instructors of different culture, different areas of expertise. In doing so, you, the students actually have an opportunity to 
interact with a diverse pool of instructors and hence practice on their soft skills in terms of communication. How do you communicate with the instructors virtually, for example? So next, I'll briefly go through some of the laboratories that are actually used in this program. So as mentioned earlier, this, the curriculum in food technology encompasses food science and food engineering. So the unit operations lab is actually where we taught engineering principles. So in the process of working through this um, engineering laboratory, so you are able to apply the engineering concepts that are taught during lectures. After the practical session itself, that's where you will analyze the results and how do you come up with a proposed solution to an industry-based scenario that is given in terms of the problem statement. So in the food analytical lab, that's where you will learn on the different techniques to characterize the food products. In the food microbiology lab, you will learn what are the different microorganisms that are responsible for food spoilage, for example, and what are the microbial techniques that are used to analyze, to determine the food safety of the product. So food chemistry lab is used to determine the chemical composition of the food. The product development lab is used by the year one and year four students to come up with a preliminary recipe for their food product before they subject it to scale up and small scale production and also to allow the consumers to evaluate the product in the sensory evaluation lab. So next is the food pilot plant. So the food pilot plant is actually a critical laboratory in this food technology program. So it houses pilot scale equipment that are commonly found in the companies with their technical centers in Biopolis, for example. So these pilot scale equipment are used in the curriculum to teach engineering principles. And in terms of the capstone project, it allows the students to produce small batches of food products to test whether the formula they have developed, whether is it scalable. So here are some pictures of the equipment that are found in the food pilot plant. So next I'll touch on an important component of the applied learning pedagogy that, that is used in this program, which is the Integrated Work Study Program. IWSP in short. So this IWSP is a 28 duration placement, student placement in a company. So it prepares the student to be industry ready. So besides supervision by the work supervisor, each student is also mentored by an academic staff during these 28 weeks. So the process of applying for this work placement resembles closely of an actual job application. So prior to this process, students are prepared. So here are some of the events or workshops that we prepare the students to be ready for the job application process, such as career nexus or sharing by their seniors, their alum, the alumni, in terms of their experience in the IWSP, their experience working in those companies. For students who have no prior exposure to the food industry, visits to the company will be helpful to allow them to gain insights on what exactly is the food industry like and what are the career opportunities in this industry. So as the name implies, Integrated Work Study Programme, there's a work doc element of it, which is referring to the day-to-day -day tasks that is assigned by the work supervisor. There's also a study component for this 28 weeks program. For this food technology program, the study components, there are three study components. The first one is an independent study where we would want each student to identify a technical topic which they will have to learn on their own, which means during these 28 weeks, they have to spend time outside of their working hours to research on this particular technical topic that they have selected. So this is a way for them to practice on their con continuous learning because although they can leverage on their academic supervisor for consultation, but they will very much have to rely on themselves to research on this topic independently and complete the report on that. The second component of this study element is the improvement project. So for the food technology program, we 
are requesting the student to identify an area of improvement at the company that they are posted to. So working on an improvement project allows them to practice the problem solving skills that they have learned in school, as well as creating value to the company that they are posted in. Lastly, at the end of this 28 weeks journey, they will need to complete a reflection report to reflect on this whole journey and to identify what are the key lessons learned and how has that helped them in their future career. So next, I'll go through some of the examples of applied learning in this particular food technology program. So first, in year one, that's where students come in with no prior background with regards to food science and technology. So to introduce them to food technology, there's this module which is Food Technology Tree Product Development. So in this particular module, students actually partner, work in groups and partner with a local food company to develop a food product catered to a specific team. So during this process of completion of this module, it allows the students to gain insights in terms of the operation of the company, what exactly does the company require in terms of a food product development. So next in year two, so year two, that's where we will expect the students to have more understanding on the food industry. So in year two, we actually provide them with industry-based scenarios, examples such as case study. So in this particular module here, food microbiology and food safety, case studies are used to teach this module. So example here is that there's this particular company which has produced a new food product encountering a case where there is a source of contamination. So in this particular case study, students will have to work back looking at the different raw materials and the process steps to identify the source of the raw microbial contamination. So it's very applied in nature in the sense that the students apply the knowledge they have learned in the lectures with regards to food microbiology or, and food safety. However, how do you exactly use those knowledge? So we put them through a practical case study where they will have to carry out design um, experiments to identify, correctly identify what exactly is the source of contamination. So in year three, so the majority of the applied learning takes place during the IWSP that I've um, talked about earlier. So specifically in terms of the problem solving skills that I mentioned, prior to them embarking on their IWSB journey, they actually, um, so they actually went through a module uh, which is termed as Industry Systems Improvement. So in that Industry System Improvement module, the students are taught on A3 problem solving. How do you apply lean thinking skills to the workplace, for example? So it is during this IWSP that they get to practice the knowledge they have gained in this particular module at the work workplace and successfully improve on an area that in the company itself. So lastly, after in year four, so for year four, as mentioned just now, there are two capstone projects for the food technology program. So the first tech capstone project for food tech, it would be the food individual food technology project. So this is a research-based project um, done individually. So unlike a typical research project where the students can be given the problem statement, the, the project brief, as well as perhaps the materials are ready, the equipment are ready for the students. So here in this case for the food technology program, the student, each student actually has to plan, scope the project, um, come up with their own project schedule, project budget. What exactly are they going to complete within these 12 weeks? So the student, each student actually has the freedom to scope the project in consultation with their project supervisors. So besides practicing the technical skills that they have learned during these past few years, they are also practicing their project management skills. How do you manage a project from initiation to completion successfully? After which, the second capstone project in this program would be the Innovative Food Design and Development module. So in this module, students partner with a company 
to develop an innovative food product collaboratively in groups. So from the project brief that is given, the problem statement that is given by the company, so students work through from ideation phase, getting consumer insights, developing the product in the product development lab that I mentioned just now, scaling it up in the pilot plant, and finally coming up with a decent prototype that is available for consumer testing, tasting, and eventually showcase their products in an exhibition that is open to the industry partners. So in this way, they are showcasing their products in a manner that is similar to product industry trade shows. So this particular project here offers them the opportunity for them to practice on their soft skill skills, such as collaboration, communication, or project planning. So next, I'll talk about the overseas exposure opportunities that is available in this program. So as mentioned just now, in year one, there's an opportunity to participate in overseas immersion program by being placed at an overseas company for a period of four months in trimester three in year one. So in year three for the IWSP that I mentioned just now, there's also an option to complete the IWSP module at an overseas company. Lastly, in year four, trimester one, for the food technology project, besides complete, there's an option to either complete this project either locally at SIT Dover or overseas at one of the food technology campus in New Zealand. So here are some of the pictures of students at Massey University who are spending a trimester there to complete their food technology project as well as one of the elective. So for admission to this food technology program, we take a holistic approach. Besides looking at your academic aptitude, we also look at your work experience in the food industry, as well as your passion to embark on your career in the food industry from the interview, for example, for shortlisted candidates. So more information relating to the admission requirements can be found on the SIT website. So besides the full-time students uh, embarking on the program, as mentioned just now, there are also part-time students who are currently working in the food industry. So for them, they may wish to embark on this program on a part-time basis. So for these part-time students, it will be a five years program. So they will deliver in the sense that they will spend three days at their workplace working and two days on campus doing, um, com while trying to complete the academic requirements of this program. So in terms of curriculum, it follows the same as the standard degree program. And in terms of students, they, the, both the full-time students and the part-time students are actually embarking on the same program together. So to date for this joint degree program, two cohorts of students have graduated. And this is a list of the companies that they are currently working in. So this year, we have a, a a group of alumni who participated in the food innovation competition, um, which is organized by Venture Cap Capital Big Ideas Ventures. So what they, this group of alumni did is that they took the product they have developed in their capstone project and used it to participate in this food innovation competition. They are the winners in terms of the functional nutrition category. So in short, this program pro prepares our students to be industry ready. And how it does so is, in terms of curriculum, this is a broad-based cu curriculum. So besides the technical knowledge itself, this program also pre prepares graduates to be industry ready by allowing them opportunities to practice and gain soft skills, such as collaboration, teamwork, communication, and so on and so forth. So for further information of if you have any queries with regards to this program, please contact us at this email. And that's the end of my presentation. Thank you.